Hey chickadees! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over the books I read in the past two months. Without further ado, let's get started with Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. This is the second book in the Dreamland Billionaire series, and in it we follow Declan, the eldest brother, and his assistant Iris as we navigate his part of the inheritance, getting married, and having a child. I think this is the first time I've ever really read a slow burn romance. As they would waffle around each other internally, we would know that they really wanted each other. The first half does drag a bit, but once they cross the threshold into romance, it takes off. 4.5 out of 5. The next book I read was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This book is about a cyborg mechanic named Cinder and her struggle to hide her identity from Prince Kai and the Lunars. I don't know if I wasn't really feeling it or what, but I didn't really like this book. I found myself not wanting to pick it up when I had downtime, and even though it was interesting at times, like when they talked about this plague that was going around killing people, but I wasn't really feeling the political intrigue and romance. Maybe I'll give this a reread in the future, but for now I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Next, I read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. When two writers reunite at a literary event, reigniting their chemistry, past traumas, and rumors arise. Whenever I need a reading reset, I always reach for a romance book. Although I thoroughly enjoyed reading this, it does get a bit heavy at times. I recommend looking up content warnings before reading. But I'll put a couple on screen, just so you have some idea of what to expect. Overall, I love the banter and how equally matched Eva and Shane were. 4.5 out of 5. After that, I read In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a memoir about Machado's abusive relationship with her ex-girlfriend. Throughout the story, we are taken from the moment she meets her to the moment she leaves. Unlike most memoirs, the format of this book reads almost like poetry or rapid journal entries. She refers to herself as you and utilizes different narrative tropes to tell her story. For example, some of the titles are Dream House as a Romance Novel or Dream House as a Demonic Possession. Sometimes they read sickly sweet, and other times it almost reads like a horror novel. And I just loved how versatile it was. 4.5 out of 5. Next, I read The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. Inspired by the real story of the Patterson family, The Davenports focuses on four determined, ambitious young women and their journey to self-discovery and love. Originally, I picked this up because it gave me Pride and Prejudice vibes. This book is like if all the women were Elizabeth. I love how they have a strong sense of self from the beginning, yet they still leave room to grow and learn throughout the novel. This is the start of a series, so it doesn't end wrapped in a bow. Which I normally don't mind, but there was a part in the book where it seemed like it would. All the characters were content and paired with their respective partners. Until we got to the third act conflict and everything basically went back to square one. While I will be continuing the series, I think this book would have stood on its own if not for the last bit. 4.5 out of 5. The last book I read in June was She is a Haunting by Tran Tran. When Jade discovers her father's renovating house is haunted, it's up to her to figure out why and to get her family out. I have mixed feelings about this book. On the one hand, the prose are exquisite, and some scenes even made me recoil in disgust. But on the other hand, the ending was a bit lackluster for me. Overall, I give it a 3.75 out of 5. The first book I read in July was Radiant Sin by Katie Robert. As a member of the 13, Apollo asks Cassandra to accompany him as his date to go undercover at a week-long party hosted by a new power player in Olympus, Minos. Unlike the first two books in this series, this one is a lot more plot heavy. It focuses mainly on figuring out Minos' motives and who you can trust in the 13, rather than the smut, which I gotta say I'm kinda disappointed by. These books are usually mindless, enjoy the ride kind of vibes, but this one had so many new characters and plots at play that I would find myself not wanting to pick it up sometimes. Not that the book itself was bad, it just took a turn I didn't think it would. That being said, 4.5 out of 5. Next book I read was Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. If you want to know my full thoughts on this book, click the video above. 2.5 out of 5. Anyways, the next book I read was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gaunt. When a mysterious contagion spreads, Juliet and Roma must team up to put an end to it. Although I like the initial mystery of the madness, as they call it in the book, and the chemistry between Juliet and Roma, I found the ending to be lacking. Let's just say we've seen it before and hey, it's a dog, bit overplayed at this point. 4.5 out of 5. After that, I read Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. This book is all about those summer city vibes. Two 20-something year olds, Isa and Gala, just trying to earn enough money to afford rent, food, and of course, drinks and activities. While this book did have some good lines, 
It also made me realize that I'm not really a just vibes book kind of girl. Like Issa, I felt like I was just stumbling from one place to another on nothing but a loose hand guiding me through the story. Three out of five. The last book I read in July was Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Frances is a study machine who won't let anything get in the way of her goal to attend an elite university. Until one day she meets Alec, the creator of her favorite podcast, Universe City. The more they spend time together, the more she not only discovers about herself, but about her unassuming friend as well. This book got to me in a way I haven't felt in a while. The feeling of trying to find where you belong, wondering if anyone will ever see the real you, and the desperate cry hidden in plain sight for someone, just anyone to listen to your pleas. I strongly advise you to check the trigger warnings before reading this because it dives into some heavy topics. Overall, I'd rate this 4.9 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care, chickadees.